So if you haven't quite figured it out yet, I'm just uh, disassembling the breaker panel because I'm going to mount it on the electrical cabinet door today. Um, so I just wanted to have just the front plate so that I could mark out the holes, the um, six holes that hold this on. And then I can cut um, the hole that takes the all of the um, breakers. So yeah, let's mark this out on the door and see how it looks. So this is the door um, and this is how the panel is going to fit. So I was kind of playing around with a few ideas. I was thinking either mount it like this, like this or like this. Um, but the top of the door actually follows the shear of the deck. So if I put it up there, you're going to see the, the shear of the deck like that. If I put it in the middle, I have like room on the top for a VHF and a couple of gauges or switch panels. And then some gauge, um, I can put some gauges here and switch panels down here. Or I can mount it on the bottom like this, which I, I don't know, I just don't like the look of it. So I think I'm going to mount it here like that. And then I can have room on the top for a few different things. So yeah, I think, I think, I think I'm going to do that. That's pretty much the panel in. It's screwed in where it fits straight away. Uh, I'm missing a couple of screws, so I'll have to get some um, more screws. But yeah, that's looking pretty cool. That's looking pretty good. So next steps now will be to, I want to change all the wires on this because it's old wiring. So I want to rewire the breaker panel and then I need to run all the wires to the positive buzz um, and the buzz, positive distribution and the negative buzz bar. So, yeah, that's a pretty nice visual change to the chat table. And my laptop set up there, and this area is starting to become really cool. I'm really excited about it. Another piece I need to mount is this control panel for the inverter, and I reckon I'm just gonna put it like that. So. It'll be like this, and then VHF will probably go there, if I get one, which I probably will. I want to get a DSC VHF, I think they're a lot better than uh, handhelds, but put that there and then I can have the control panel for like the heater and then maybe the, the controls for the batteries and all this kind of thing. I also have this guy here, which is the battery control switches. Uh, I just need to run the wiring for that, but um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Right, so the switch panel installed, perfect. Um, I still need to rewire the switch panel, but I haven't got the materials yet that's coming from the UK. Um, fit, I've mounted this panel for the uh, inverter, so the power inverter will come off this. Um, the inverter will live under the chart table with the batteries. Um, I wanna keep the wire runs from the battery to the inverter extremely short, so these are the wires or the cabling that comes with it. Um, so I'm gonna have a buzz bar under the chat table where the batteries go and loads will come off that. So down the line when I fit a water maker, I can just plug that onto the buzz bar. There will be a, so a, be a positive buzz bar in here for running to the distribution panel and off to different things. But anyway, the next thing that I want to fit or at least put in place is this bad boy here. So this is a uh, BMV712 Victron Energy battery monitor. So it's specced to be able to do lithium batteries. Now, everything that I've put into the boat regarding the charging systems and the monitoring systems and all the supporting systems are actually going to be um, capable of running lithium batteries. Now, one of the main reason, one of the main reasons that lithium is a little bit of a pain in the ass for people to retrofit is because all of the old tech um, supporting the batteries needs to be replaced so I'm actually front doing the, the work up front because it's not that much more um, it's not that much more expensive to fit the proper stuff for lithium like my solar charge controller which is this guy it's a 
Renergy, um, I think there's a 40, yeah, it's a 40 amp MPPT charge controller. So there's PWM charge controllers and there's MPPT charge controllers. The MPPT charge controllers, um, the way they work is any excess voltage that they bring in from the panels. So normally um, solar panels are like, up, can be up to 17 volts. Um, any excess voltage, they, I'm not 100% sure how it does it, but it turns those into charging amps rather than into heat. So these are far better than PWM charge controllers. Um, this one was about 100 and something euro. It wasn't that bad, um, but it should be, it's, it, it is specced for lithium, so that can actually run um, lithium batteries too. So going back to our charge monitor, or battery monitor, let's uh, open it up and take a look. So here is the what you get with the kit. So you get a um, you get the monitor. So there's the actual gauge. Uh, there's a square faceplate as well if you don't want a round round gauge. I'm probably going to fit the square one to match the rest of the stuff. Um, this is actually what does a lot of the um, it does it, it's this, this is one of the key components of the whole setup, right? This is called a shunt. So it's a 500 amp shunt which can take up to 500 amps of draw. But basically, if you think of the um, if you think of the mathematical equation, V equals I R, we know that the voltage of our boat is going to be 12 volts. We're looking for the amp draw, but we'll know the resistance because there's actually a little resistor on these shunts. So this is of known resistance. I don't know exactly what it is, but it'll be of known resistance. Um, so we can calculate the amp draw based on those things. Um, that's what how I understand a shunt um, from my school days, but anyway. Yep, so this is the battery side and this is the load side. And then what happens is, um, it's a break in the line with a known resistance and it can calculate how many amps are going into the battery, how many amps are coming out of the battery, the condition of the batteries, all those different things um, that the monitor can calculate or this little fella can calculate. So. Um, this was a pretty expensive bit of kit. This is about 200 quid, but um, as I was saying earlier, I'm trying to spec all of this stuff for lithium um, batteries, so that if we go with lithium instead of lead acid, we'll be ready for it and we won't have to redo anything. So with all that shite talk out of the way and me probably getting things drastically wrong, uh, here's the manual. So we can go through the manual there and um, see how we fit this. So yeah, you drill a, what is it, 53 mil hole, and then you can panel mount it with either the square face or the round face. And then, so effectively then you just mount it, um, or you, you configure it like this. You can see there we have the focus. You can see we have the shunt there, and it's a break in the negative, in the system negative. Um, and then we've got the start battery and the house battery. So I don't have a 50 mil hole saw, so I can't fit the gauge today. So I have to go and get a 50 mil hole saw. But um, I've started doing the galley side wiring now. So remember we put the conduit in. Uh, the conduit went in when we before we did the foaming. And basically I'm putting a junction box in here or the conduit will come in here tidily. And then I can start pulling my wiring through. Now the, the main wiring on this side will be for the, um, the galley. So the galley stove has a 12 volt ignition on it, so that, need, that needs to be one, but that can be joint, that can actually share with the down lights that I'm gonna put on underneath the shelf. So that's one wire. And then there needs to be two wires, uh, one for the fridge and one for the freezer. So we're gonna go for two little Dometic 21 liter fridge freezers. Uh, one will act as fridge, one will act as freezer. So I haven't got them yet, but I wanna run the cabling for it and just um, have that in place. So yeah, I've put this junction box on now. I'm gonna trim this um, down to length and start pulling um, some cabling through. This area, this drawer isn't finished yet, so I need to paint inside and put something on the bottom shelf and everything, but Jim still has a few little jobs to do, so we'll do that when he's finished with that. Um, yeah, let's get the wiring down at least. So that's pretty tidy. Um, these are used to pull K 
cabling through so we might pull a few of those through in a minute but um yeah this is nice and tidy so at least then when the doors close now you'll never see the the wiring um and where it's hidden so obviously there'll be food and stuff in here but um yeah look it's a simple job but it's another one off the list so what i'm doing here is i'm taping the fish wire to the pull wire that i have in the conduit already because i actually pulled a wire through the forward cabin a couple of months ago and the um this pull wire cracked and i was lucky because I was managed to get the fish wire up, this really nice strong fish wire with a proper end on it. And I was able to pull the wire through, but what I've done, what I've started doing now is I pull the pull wire, or I pull, so I pull the fish wire through uh, using the pull wire, and then I pull the cabling through with the fish wire, and it just makes a lot more sense. Uh, by the way, it's Storm Atia, A-T-I-Y-A-H. It's the first name storm of the season apparently, but um, it's absolutely blowing stink outside. And sorry if you can hear it, but um, I try as I might, I've tried, but I can't control the, the weather. It's a real pain in the ass. Um, if you know how to do it, then comment below. But um, yeah, it's blowing like hell. The boat's flying around the place, but I'm just listening to BB King and uh, tipping away. But, I'll show you what I've done. I put the inverter into the battery, uh, into the battery compartment. Yeah, um, as I was saying earlier, somebody mentioned pretty rightly that this is a small area. I'm probably going to be able to fit two batteries quite comfortably in here to, and maintenance is going to be a bit of a pain in the ass. But um, I do hope that down the line I'll find a better place, maybe before the build is finished, maybe under one of the seats or something. But for now, this is where I'm going to set it up. Um, the only thing that would be a pain if I had to change the location of the batteries is I'd have to buy new cabling, probably a lot heavier as well because the distances will be different. But um, I'll just show you what I've done with the inverter and we'll go from there. So here is the inverter uh, mounted on the wall here, or this is the bulkhead, the middle bulkhead, so that's where it's going. Uh, underneath there, I'm going to put a power point, but I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but you can see just under the switch here, there's like a standard telecoms communication port. Um, and what you can do is you can leave that on and then control the um, you control the inverter from that control panel. So the cable that came with the inverter is way too short, so I have to get a longer one, but it's only a standard telecoms comms, um, cable, so it shouldn't be expensive, but I'll get a two or three meter one and uh, see how that goes. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run sockets off these plug sockets here or these these yeah these three pins here i'm gonna wire in some sockets i'll probably put one under the chart table here and then one in the galley but um that's the plan and that's how it's looking and there is the distribution block so the positive will come off the battery onto there and then the distribution um board will click uh connect to this and then if I ever get a water maker I'll put it onto this so I'm just going to label these now um, to what they are and then label the cables as well I don't have um, I don't think I have clear, I definitely don't have clear heat shrink to do these yet but I'm going to get one of those I think I'll get those cable tie labels that you can get for bigger cabling um, that's starting to look tidy these will be secured properly um, over time but this is the cable that came with the inverter, so I'm not going to go shortening it. I don't think there's any point. I could, but I don't think I'm going to bother. We'll see how we get on. But um, next step, really, and I don't have what I need to do it, but if I could fit some batteries in here and then start connecting everything up, that would be great. Thank you. 
anyone who's any good at wiring will tell you that good wiring is just a liberal and completely unnecessary use of labels. So we've just labeled everything. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory what most of this stuff is, but I always think that when you open an electrical a box or any kind of electrical setup, labels make everything look awesome. So I've just put labels on everything. And now for something completely different. So you may remember about a year ago, <clears throat> I was trying to rebuild a Sea Tiger um, since St. Lawrence uh, windlass. Well, that didn't really work out in the end. It ended up the gears inside the windlass were all shattered. It, the windlass had obviously been in a bit of an accident. Um, and if you know about the Sea Tigers, you know that they're actually quite hard to find. So I felt like I was kind of out of luck. But I was on eBay one day, good old eBay, and I found one kind of local to where uh, one of my family members lives in the UK. So we ended up picking that up and I got it over to Ireland. So I'm going to stick that on now and see how it goes. Here we have the windlass I picked up. There's a bit of a leak in some of the seals. I have the seal kit, but um, it's just not a job I want to tackle at the moment. So I just want to stick the windlass on and get it working at least so that I have some means if we go sailing soon. Um, we can pull the anchor up and I can service this probably in place as well because the seals are external I think so we'll worry about that later but let's just get it on for now and see what the story is. So there it is, and there's a little leak I was saying, there's a couple of small oil leaks, but I, again I want to take this off and put a, like a pad under it anyway, so um, this is coming off soon to get painted and, and kind of done up anyway, so, but for now it looks pretty good, makes the deck look a little bit better. So that's actually all I have time for today, um, I know we didn't get as much as hoped done this weekend, but um, as I said the deliveries from like the likes of Black Friday, Christmas coming up, everything's really delayed because like the postmen are just absolutely up the walls. But um, as you can probably hear, the wind is blowing about it'll easily 50 knots now. The boat's leaning over like mad, there's rain hammering, so I think I'm just going to wrap up and go uh, and stay at my brother's for the night But because um, we've got work tomorrow. But anyway, thanks for watching the video and um, as always, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next video. So thank you and goodbye.